This gal is pretty cool. She's a motivational comedian. And if she can't motivate you, she'll make sure she motivates you. She's been in Forbes magazine. Let's give it up for Jen Lederer. How we doing? How we doing tonight? Yeah, nice, nice, nice. It feels good to be nice, doesn't it? Right? Like in those moments, especially if you do it anonymously, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you walk away from that moment like, if I die today, I'm confident that I'm going to be just fine. Right? Being nice feels good, but if I'm being honest, being right feels better. Right? But when you're right, it doesn't fucking count on the ego scoreboard if no one's there to see it. Right? Someone has to be there to co-sign on your rightness. Otherwise, it's like a total fucking waste of energy. Like, it doesn't count when you're nailing it on Wheel of Fortune and no one's there to see it because it's 1 p.m. on a weekday and what the fuck are you doing with your life, Jen? What? What are you doing? Motivational comedy. That's what the fuck I'm doing with my life. Okay? And I've come to realize that there's one response when someone learns I'm a motivational comedian, and that is, what the fuck is that? The fuck is that? But the interesting thing is there's, there's two connotations underneath the what the fuck is that. Okay, there's one connotation that I get from, like, the general public, which is more like a, what the fuck is that? Tell me more. How exciting. You know, curiosity, support. And then there's the connotation that I get from anyone in the comedy world when they're like, what the fuck is that? Is this the embodiment of everything that's wrong with comedy? What the fuck is this? Except also, I'd fuck that, so ah, fuck it. Let's give her a chance. See what she does. God, I move through this world with a lot of fucking privilege, okay? I mean, let's just be honest about that. First of all, I'm clearly a Sagittarius, so, you know, if that wasn't enough luck of the fucking draw, I also grew up with two of the most loving and supporting parents you'll ever fucking meet, okay? It's unfair, the level of love. I grew up in an environment that said, Jen, you can do anything you want to do, and I bought that shit hook, line, and sinker. Oh, did you, Jen? We didn't notice. <laughs> haven't noticed. And now, I'm not sure if any of you have picked up on this, but white women, okay, in particular those of us who grew up in a very supportive environment, tend to move through the world in a bit of a, bit of a trust bubble, right? One that says, like, I am here to be right. I am here to be fucking noticed. There's nothing worse than being right when no one notices. So clearly we're always adding value to every space we're in. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also here to assure you, I promise you, that bubble, it does pop. Okay? <laughs> promise you. Seventh grade English class. <laughs> Yep, yep, nice, nice and early on that one uh, when something for me popped and um, uh, my, my teacher said if anyone here can give me a word that either I've never heard of or I can't define, you get extra credit. Now, quick backstory to this little moment in my life. Um, it's important for you to know that I'm the youngest of three girls, so I always have been and still am the favorite. And I just had this incredible connection with my father. Right? I, grew, I grew up just stars in my eyes, believing everything he said to me, because it was clear he was shaping my reality to be the best that it could be. And it wasn't until this moment in English that I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute, he might be making some of this shit up. Okay? So I grew up hearing my father use two words 
And he used these words on such a regular fucking basis that I knew the definition to these words. I could use them in context. These were real words in my life. And I feel you prejudging me without even knowing these fucking words. I mean, what did you get on the SAT scores? We don't know all the words. I'm not claiming to have all the best words, but these words are fucking applicable, okay? Feel free to use them this week when you happen upon scenarios when they will be applicable, because they fucking will. So here I am, faced with this opportunity to not only be right, but to be noticed by my entire class and get extra credit. Fuck yeah, I was born for this moment. Thanks, Dad. Boom, got this. All right, Jen. What do you got for us? Well, I actually have two words. Because I was always that bitch. <laughs> and they said, all right. She said, what do you got for us, Jen? First word, I said, Canipteus Lodius. And she said, really? You want to define that word for us? Maybe give us some context? I said, absolutely. Your mother's going to have a conniptious lodius about this mess. It's when someone has a conniption, but worse. And I'm feeling very confident. And she said, okay, Jen. Well, that's great. You said you had a second word for us. Can't wait to hear this one. What do you got? Bubble of trust still fully intact. I plow ahead with the confidence of any white woman who's loved by both of her parents. And I said, second word, diastacutus. Now, seeing the reaction on her face, I quickly followed up with diastacutus and was, is when something is kind of on a diagonal, but not quite. What the fuck? <laughs> right? What? actually is that, but I was so confident in this moment, and in this moment is also when my bubble of trust popped like a fucking pimple on prom night, and I realized there is something worse when no one's there to see you when you're right, and that's when fucking everyone is there to see you when you're wrong, and it was in that moment that I had my very first Canipteus Lodius. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You guys have been great. My name is Jen Letterer. Thank you. I hope you feel a little motivated to love yourself, even if your father lied to you about what's real in this world. Come on up, sir. Just putting this mic away backwards for you. Thank you. Let's hear it for Jen Letterer, everybody. She reminded me of...